Hey guys, it's Melanie Klein in Western Colorado. I am a gardener and a jeweler, and I can't work the soil because it's still too cold. So I've challenged myself to make these little teeny, size of a penny, botanical vignettes a flower a day. Um, they're meant to challenge my skills and to amuse me, and I've been posting them on my Facebook page. But a lot of you that have seen them are asking how the heck does she make those teeny tiny flowers. Um, so I promised that I would do a video, and I've never have before, but right here with me is Craig, who has, and he's home because of the lockdown, so he's agreed to help me. Hey, hon. Hi. <laughs> okay, so I'm hoping to show you how to make this little columbine. Now, I'm having to make it a little bit bigger than you see in this vignette because the camera would never be able to catch anything as tiny as the one that's you're pictured right now. So the one above that you see is the one that we're going to make today. So for the Columbine, we're going to be using sterling silver sheet, and in this case we're using 24 gauge. We're going to be using round wire 20 gauge and half round wire 14 gauge. And we're starting by creating our pattern on the silver sheet. And the way I like to do it is to glue, and this is just printer paper, um, the glue paper to my silver after sanding it really well to make sure that the paper will stick. It's important to sand it, to have it have the tooth, or whatever that term might be, to, to really stick. Otherwise, your saw, when you're sawing through there with your jeweler saw, you'll see it wants to lift it off. And I know that there's other jewelers that use like a shipping label, or, um, I don't know, tracing paper. I don't know what all they do, but for me, this is what works the best. And I find that the shipping label or tape just gums up my saw when I'm trying to cut. So um, make sure that when you put it on there, you smooth it all out so that there's no lumps underneath there. Because if there's lumps in your drawing, you may make a mistake on your uh, sign. Get rid of all the excess paper. Uh, you need to really be able to see the edge. So I do it, I, I've finished my edges with a file actually. And that really helps because sometimes you're working with um, some silver that you've already cut into and it's got curves and angles and it's not a straight edge like that. But if I use the half round side of my file, I can trim right down to the edge. And I need to do that because I need to conserve the metal. Um, sterling and if I'm working in gold, either one of them, they're expensive. And so I try to really see the edge and then I set up my pattern right on the edge. And that's what you can see what we're doing right now. I have a lot of different templates for different uh, shapes. In this case, we're going to use a circle. And this is going to form one layer of petals. And you'll see how that's done in a minute. But right now, trying to find the center. Marking the center. Now I have to figure out where five petals go. Columbines have five petals. So I like to use a divider because I hate to try to figure out the math. And that's what you're seeing me doing now is just walking that divider around trying to find out where five equal places are. And I'm, I'm kind of pushing down and making a little mark in there that I can see. You can't see it on the camera, but I can see it. And that will be the tip of my five petals. That's a pretty clever way of doing it. Oh, I'd hate to do the math. I wouldn't even know how to do the math, truthfully. This is simple. This is simple. <laughs> you just make it bigger or smaller until you end up where you started. So I'm marking out, just kind of rough, roughly marking where the center of each of these petals are going to be. This is a green lion saw, by the way, you guys, and I love it. <coughs> I 
getting ready to put a little dot, a center punch, in the middle of that circle. And that's where I'm going to drill a hole for my saw to go in. Drilling a hole where I punched the center little divot. That's a number 64 drill bit. It's pretty much my go-to general drill bit size because it fits most every saw blade. And now I'm marking another circle in the middle around where my drill hole was um, that will be the center of the flower. And when I'm cutting with my saw, I'll stop at that circle, you'll see. Now, you might be tempted to cut out that circle and then cut out the petals, but if you do that, it doesn't leave you anything to hold on to. You're trying to hold on to that little teeny circle, and especially when you're making them as small as I am in those little vignettes, um, it makes a lot of sense to leave it attached to the most metal as possible so that you're not dropping it and bending it and all the things that happen when it's teeny. See what a tight curve you can cut if you keep your saw moving straight up and down? Just keep moving, turn the metal. Why didn't you draw the petals? I didn't need to. I knew where I was going, and I know that those lines that are radiating from the middle are the center lines of each petal, so I'm just eyeballing it. Plus, we're making flowers, and they're pretty organic, so if they're a little bit different from each other, it's okay. There you go. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm pushing pretty hard just to keep that in place so that it doesn't bounce around. When you're sawing, your saw wants to lift up your whole project. That's when you break your blades. Um, so if you're pushing down with your fingers, try to keep your fingers out of the way because how many times have I cut myself? I can't even tell you. You'll notice on my bench pin has lots of different little slits in it, different widths, different depths, and I move around for where I need to hold it best. Sometimes this this like biggest one in the middle doesn't give me the support I need, so I switch to that little one you just saw me use. There's that little teeny flower. Now I'm opening up my saw, putting the blade through the hole that I drilled. putting tension back in my saw so that I can cut in the center. And what I want to do is cut out almost to that little inner circle. Not quite, because I don't want my petals to fall off, so I'm leaving just a hair to keep them all connected. And that'll be the first layer of our petals. in there with your saw like that and use it like a file. It wasn't quite round, my cut, so I just am sort of shaving off the inside a little bit more so that it's even all around. Now you can just use a file or you can use sandpaper or you can go to the sink either way to get that paper off. I'm using a file here.
So Craig has set me up with three cameras in my studio, and as I just said, this is my first video. So try as I might, there's still going to be times when I'm doing things off camera, and that's the case now. I, what, I, what you see is that I've cut the half round wire that I described, the 14 gauge half round wire, uh, into five equal lengths, and I'm using my torch to ball back the ends, trying really hard to make them all the same size. Um, important thing to say about when you're balling back the ends of wire, no matter what wire you're talking about, is you have to think of gravity. So if you hold this straight up and down like that, the ball's going to be on the end. If I held it out sideways, the ball would be like a drop off the end going down. You follow me? So now I'm taking a look. How did I do? Are they the same size? Because it's going to be crucial. These are going to be pedals later. Those need a little bit more melting. So again, I'm going to pick them up and I'm going to hold it straight down and just ball it back just a little bit more till they match. So you're looking at that same wire that we just balled back, but now what I'm doing is hammering those little balls flat to become petals. And so hopefully you can see, if you look carefully, the flat part of the half round wire is up, up against my bench block. And I'm trying to hammer them all the same amount so that they flare all the same and become petals that are the same size. Now later on down the road, if you've not gotten this quite right, there's ways to adjust it and sand it and even cut if you need to, but it's much better to take the time right here and you'll see why. At this point, we're just going to bend up those little flat areas that we made in the wire. Pretty much a right angle. Try to get them alike. That one got bent a little bit too far down, and so it was sticking up higher than the rest. So now let's look. There's this little teeny flower. By the way, this flower that you see right there is about twice the size of the ones in the little vignette. So you can see that my fingers would have just been in the way, and you wouldn't have been able to see anything. I'm feeding those little, what should we call them, petals, I guess, of, made of half-round wire down through the middle of the petals that I made, and they're sticking up. And this is a little bit of a tricky part. You want to make sure that, because they're crowded in there, and they have to be crowded, they have to be tight, but they also have to have room for each other to nest comfortably and not make them turn inward. So that's what I'm doing. It's just like, is this going to work? Do I need to change anything right now? This is the time to take a good look. Because the next thing we're going to do after this is get them, get them soldered in place. And if they're not right when you do that, there's no going back.
It looks all right. Okay, now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This is probably like the most important secret I'm going to give you in this whole video. So this is just a piece of copper wire that I'm bending into a circle. I bet you're all wondering why. Why is she doing this? Hmm. So I'm going to bring the ends together because my, my intention is to actually solder this copper circle together. Right now I'm just checking to see if it's the size that I like and if it's going to line up equally on those spokes. So I'm going to solder it together and I'm using Handy Flux because I have the best luck with Handy Flux if I'm working with copper or brass. I don't use it when it's silver to silver, but when I'm using copper to copper or copper to silver, anytime I'm mixing the metals and they're not silver and gold that I'm mixing, I use the handy flux. I'm still using Handy Flux because I'm using what I just said, copper to silver, and I'm going to solder that circle down. This is hard solder. I use solder, hard solder pretty much all the way through every project. Um, sometimes I use medium later. If I do, usually I assemble elements with hard and then in the end put the elements together with medium. Um, but I use hard as long as I can and that's just from being a jeweler for a really long time. Having to make repairs on other people's jewelry and really being mad when it falls apart when I put my torch on somebody else's work. So I've learned to just always use hard so that the jewelers of the future that may handle my work aren't swearing at me in my grave. little piece of hard solder. Um, this is a solder pick. Ball it up into a little ball and it makes it really easy to place it where you want it to go. If you've never used a solder pick, it's the timing. It's like it turns into a ball and then you go in there with a pick and if your timing is right it'll stick right to it. That's the bad thing about handy flux, it's really sticky. So 
So now my petals are trapped on those spokes that are made of the half round wire. And everything is held together before I even solder on the flower. Getting the petals kind of even, spreading them out, and making sure that they're round and facing the right direction because when I solder the whole thing together, it's going to be a lot harder to move them than it is right now. So I'm just making sure that they're all sticking out at the same angle. And I'm going to rotate those spokes so that they stick out in between each cut petal. Looks good. Still hard solder. This time I'm going to switch fluxes though. I was using handy flux, but now I'm just soldering silver to silver down there in the middle. So I'll go ahead with the Banterns Flux or the Floron, whatever you guys call it. Which is, is not sticky and it works really well for when you're working with gold or when you're working with silver. You can watch your Flux this, this kind of flux, this Floron flux or Banterns, whatever you want to refer to it as, gets kind of black and spiderwebby looking when it's about ready to receive hard solder. When, we've, when it's come up to the temperature where hard solder will almost melt, you get this black spiderwebby indication. And you know that you can go in there and that the solder will be attracted to the spot, to the heat. let it all run, heat the whole thing in general. And what it's doing is it's soldering the petals to the half round wire. And I'm flipping it over and I'm bringing all that solder up. The solder is attracted to the heat, so if I have my heat source at the top, the solder is going to come up from the back. And everything is stuck together now. Looks good. So at this point I've cooled it off. I've cleaned it a little bit in my pickling solution, which is a synthetic sulfuric acid. Rinsed it off really good neutralized it with baking soda so that I can really handle it. And I'm playing with the petals, adjusting them again, making sure I like how they are. And now we're doing this 20 gauge wire. This is the round wire that I talked about at the beginning. And cutting five lengths of that. These are kind of random lengths. I'm just going for longer than that circle. So like we did on the half round, we're going to ball back this wire. It's a little bit out of focus till the end, but you'll be able to see what we're doing and once again we're trying for all the balls to be the same size and all straight down from the wire. So we're holding it where gravity's helping us straight down.
and there they are. They look pretty good. They look like they're all the same length. So back at my other bench, and everything is cold now, I'll show you what we do with these guys. They become the little stamen in the middle of the flower. So I feed it through the center, hold the little ball by the petal, and bend it up to my framework. Make sure it's in the right place. and wrap it around to secure it. Tighten it so it doesn't move. And do the same thing with the other four. I'm checking to make sure that they're sort of sticking up the same amount, the same height, and tightening them up. I think that last one was a little bit high, and I had to fuss with it a little bit when I looked at it. So I ended up, oh, that isn't the last one. Wait a minute. I'll show you what to do if you have this problem. So after I tightened it, I realized that it was just a little bit higher than the other four. So what I did was just took my tweezers, tried to see if it made a difference if I rearranged them. But I still noticed a difference, uh, even with that. So I went in with my tweezer and just kind of crimped that one wire to make a difference in the length. See? And that brought it down. I think you're starting to see the advantage of working with this framework. I can't imagine actually doing it any other way if you were trying to solder each one of these individually, which I used to do before I invented the framework method, <laughs> and it was almost impossible. So I don't know. I guess it's experience.
So I'm going to secure each one of those, let's call them stamen wires, each one of those stamen wires to the frame. We're still in hard solder, guys. Craig's doing an awesome job on this camera work for me in, in the soldering area. I hope you can all see, but it sure looks like the details are coming through. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. <laughs> Certainly had challenges when we shot this, that's for sure. But it's only our first video. I know. I think we did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just making sure that all those little stamen are where I want them to be before I actually solder them in place. Right now we've soldered the stamen to the frame, but they're still free inside there. And there we go. Now, what, you didn't see me add any solder. That's because there was still enough from the original soldering when we soldered the pedals to the half round that I didn't need much more. So now I'm just checking to make sure that they all really did solder with the residue from the solder that was there before. And I could see there's a couple more spots that could use a little bit more so that it doesn't fall apart when I release this whole thing from the frame. This is, I think we're coming up to my favorite of your best shot to see all that solder flow. Perfect. Good job. All right, fiddling with it. Making sure everything's even. How'd we do? Do we need to go back and solder anything, change anything at this point? Or do we like it? Okay. Bending the petals down a little, opening up that flower. This is also a good way to tell if everything really is soldered. Because you've got, you know, a lot of little things in a small space. And you want to make positive sure that you've caught every single one of them. So bending down the petals a little bit, opening it up, taking a look. So what I'm doing right now, I, I noticed that some of the petals were a little bit um, narrower, narrower than others, and I wanted to spread them out, so I'm squeezing them with my round nose pliers, and that spreads the metal just enough to make them grow a little bit wider. Now, I'm ready to take off the framework. Do you use the framework on other pieces in, in the uh, 
with other vignettes? Yeah, well, for a lot of things, okay. actually. Not just flowers. And use copper because it's less expensive. Yeah, because it's really waste. Right. So at this point, I'm trying to I'm trying to show you that it doesn't have to just be a little flower like in my vignette. But if you want, this is a large enough one that you could put a stone in the middle. I keep a lot of tube set gemstones um, just loose like that to see how they'd look in a design. This is what would happen, how you could fit in a prong setting if you wanted to do that for a gemstone or a diamond. And you could spread those stamen out more for a bigger head if you wanted to use a bigger stone. This is a, th that one right there is a three millimeter stone in a tube. You can't really tell in this picture. I think three millimeters too big for that flower. And there's a pearl. And really, if you push that pearl down, you can bend in the stamen and they'll hold it like prongs. This is a little gold ball that I wanted to see how it might look with mixed metals. I can't tell it's gold right now because it's so brown, but that's just some options. And, and I would do that at this point to decide what I'm going to do with the remaining petals that are sticking out. Um, because different styles might want to be, have, um, with, you know, if I choose a stone in there, I might want the flower to be a different style. But I've decided to cut them short because that's how columbines are. Now, if this was going to be a pendant, I would definitely leave one long and have it be the bale that the chain would go through. I would just bend it around and solder it together, and that would be the top. You could also do fun other things with the, the ends of the, like that, the round wire. You could bend it around and bend it back or make tendrils or do all kinds of things. But for the columbine, I don't need them. This is how you would do that if you wanted to. And this is when you would do that if you wanted to. It's starting to be a flower, isn't it? So the only thing I'm going to leave sticking out is the half round original kind of spikes that we put there. I just need to shape them. You can tell in this picture where, what I've cut off, where I've cut it off, and the things that I'm going to shape in the next few steps. But right now, we're going to solder on a stem. This is 16 gauge round wire I forgot to tell you about. See how I have it in a locking tweezers? And I'm trying to decide right now if it's going to stick straight out from the back or if it's going to lay down on the side. Uh, flux. And I'm going to use that stem like I use a solder pick. We're still on hard solder, guys. So what I'm going to do is heat that solder into a ball, but I'm going to pick it up with a stem not the solder pick. The reason I'm doing that is because the solder's already in place. 
and I don't have to figure out how to place the solder at the same time I'm placing the stem. So bring that up to temperature and when you know that it's close, just put the stem down and heat them together. Beautiful. Clean up. Starting with my flex shaft and a little sanding disc. And what I'm doing now is making those extensions pointy. They're kind of, they're just flat from when I cut them off. And this is a sanding disc. It's a snap-on disc that has sand, sanding grit on one side. This is one of the fine ones. And I flip it around. Sometimes the sanding area is on the underside and sometimes it's on the top, depending on what it is I'm working on. Right now I flipped it just to show you. You can see it better. This is a fat, sharp bud burr. And I'm going to use it on the back to smooth out the hole and the stem connection and all those pedal connections. Um, there, it's all solid solder back there now, so I can sculpt it to be any shape to make the back side look really nice. This is a nice tool. You can use the point, you can use the sides, you can use it like a ball burr if you put it on its side. And now we go to the little bristle wheels. Yellow is fairly coarse, and what I'm doing right now is using it to take out the scratches that I had on those original petals from the file, from the sandpaper, from the gluing of the paper. It all left marks, and this evens all that out. This doesn't polish. This just sands. Okay, so this is important. This is a tool I use all the time, and it's called a Kraus burr. I think it's K-R-A-U-S. I'm showing it to you here. It's a tapered, it's a skinny, really sharp tapered file. And because I'm not an engraver, you know, I mean with engraving tools and all that, um, I tend to use a Kraus burr for when I need to engrave a line into something. That's what I'm doing here. I decided that I wanted to put a line down the middle of each of those petals. It's really important to be stable and not slip on this. And you can see that whenever I use a flex shaft or with, with whatever tool, but particularly right now with the Kraus burr, my thumb is pushing against my other finger or my other thumb for stability so that nothing slips, nothing moves. I've got a really good grip. My elbows are in to the side of my body. and. The only thing that's moving is from my wrist, and boom, alive. I like those lines so much, I put them in the inner petals too. And at this point I decided that it would look good to f sort of flute the edges of those petals that are sticking up, so I'm just squeezing the edges. Maybe you can see it in a minute. If I think there's a zooming in kind of feature here. Um, that we crimp the edge and it makes it kind of ruffly and even more flower-like because I mean this thing's made of sheet metal, right? But you want it to look very botanical. And this is the blue wheel which takes away the scratches that the yellow wheel left 
And now we're starting to get kind of a matte sanded finish. Still not quite a polish. So thank you for watching. Here's another look at all those little botanicals. I hope you had fun. We had a lot of fun. Thank you so much again, Craig, for helping me make this video. Thanks for watching.